Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about shared objects, which you might also have heard of as dynamically linked libraries or DLLs. Um, but I'm going to tell you kind of how they work and uh, how applications use them to make modules. Like, you know, for instance, Python uses them to do extension modules, so like C modules make a shared object and they get kind of magically imported at runtime. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you kind of how they work and why dynamic linking is you know, has some nice attributes to it uh, and show you a simple example. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, we're gonna be working on Linux today. So Linux, uh, you know, each operating system implements this slightly differently. Uh, for instance, like on Windows, they're gonna be .dlls and .exes for dynamically linked libraries and executables. I think Mac OS uses dylib, D-Y-L-I-B for theirs, uh, but also .so, which is what Linux uses. Um, we're going to be working with Linux and the Linux tools today, uh, so the tools are going to be slightly different on a different platform, um, but that's fine. Anyway, what we're going to be making today is a small little C executable, and it is going to use dynamic linking to pull in a third-party library and do some functionality. I'm going to show you uh, how we can kind of inspect that and see what it's linked against, and uh, also we'll, I guess we'll draw a diagram at the end as well to kind of tie it all together. Uh, but anyway, we're going to write a little C file. Uh, before we get started, uh, we're going to be using UUID as our third-party library today. I think I used UUID in another video as well. Um, but we should expect UUID dev to be in our uh, installed libraries. And if you want to see the version that I have installed, I have this version, which ships with Ubuntu. Uh, this version will actually be important later. We'll come back to this in a bit. Um, we're actually going to show you that dynamic linking can make it so you don't actually care so much about the version. Uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, but yes, and we are also going to look at the files that are specified by this. We're going to do dpackage-l, and we're going to be looking for uuid.h. This is the header file that's going to specify all the functions we can use. Uh, we're also going to include that, uid, uuid.h. Uh, we're also going to get standard io.h so we can print some stuff. It's going to be a very silly program that just generates a uuid and then prints it. Um, so let's take a look at this header and figure out what we need out of here. Um, cool header. Uh, looks like there's a UUIDT type, so we're probably gonna need that. UUIDT, UUID. Uh, and it's only 16 characters. I think this means it's binary. So let's try and generate one of these and see what it looks like. And then there's probably some UUID to text thing. Um, how do we generate one? UUID generate. I think this generates a blank one. I think we probably want this function. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the right function, but let's uh, let's just run one. UUID generate random UUID, sure. And then got UUID percent %s, and then let's pass in our UUID string. Let's see what this looks like and uh, generate that. So I'm going to compile this. We're just going to run gct.z. This is not going to work. Uh, this is going to, oops, I did print, <laughs> print F. It's not going to work for a different reason. Uh, you can see that we got undefined reference to UUID generate random. And that's because we didn't link in that other library. So when we tried to uh, build this, we specified UUID as a header. This just pulled in the header contents, but it didn't actually link the executable against that. So when we're running GCC, we need to do dash L and the library name. Now, usually the library name is the same as the um, the shared object name here, but without lib, <laughs> that just is the convention, I guess. So we're going to use UUID as our library name here. UUID this should generate us an executable, and we can run this executable. And it's currently printing out garbage here. Um, that's fine. I think that garbage is actually intentional. Uh, this is the binary representation, so we need to turn in another text representation. Let's figure out what the text is. Uh, uh, air star out. Yeah, that sounds like what we want. UUID unparse. How big is this care star? Do they have like a strlen thing in here? And yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so if we want to have a, a care UUID string of UUID strlen, and that will allow us to get our stringified version. What was it? UID, UUID unparse? Yeah, UID unparse uh, takes the UUID and puts it into our UUID string. And so now if we print this and compile that again, 
Hey, that looks more like a UUID. All right, cool. So we have our executable, uh, and we're successfully linking against UUID. And we'll talk more about what that means in a, in a little bit. Um, but yeah, this this executable uh, you know pulls in pulls in the UUID library just by specifying this header and saying, uh, you know, figure out figure out how to make this all work. And what's going on here is the dynamic linker is doing a little bit of magic. Uh, when we start our executable, it's going to look up that binary or look up the shared object, the .so file that provides those UUID functions, stitch it into our executable at runtime, and then make all those functions available to uh, essentially the C code. It's going to do some rearrangement of objects and do some kind of magic memory stuff. We're not going to talk too much about the magic memory, but I'm going to show you how you can kind of poke at that and see how it works. Uh, the first command we're going to look at is ldd. This command is going to show us what a uh, executable is linked against. Uh, and so you can see here, there's a, there's four things here. I don't know what this is. I, I used to know. Uh, this seems to appear in every single ELF binary, every single dynamically linked ELF binary that I've seen. I don't know what VDSO is, but I'm sure you can look it up if you want. Uh, we do see uuid.so.1. This is actually the, the dash L uuid, the, the LinkedIn uuid library and it found it at this location. Found it at this location is kind of important, and we'll touch on that a little bit. You also see that it linked in libc. This is this the C runtime. Uh, and we also got this LD at the end. Now, LD is actually the dynamic linker itself. This is what magically figures out where to stitch those symbols and stuff in. Um, but we won't, we won't talk too much about that. But this you'll see these three on pretty much every C executable that you have. Uh, and you know, you'll see a similar set of those for a C++ executable as well. So you'll see lib standard C++. Um, but this is the kind of interesting one. You'll see that it uh, linked in libuuid and we found it at this location. So LD uh, or LDD and LD, I guess, and DL, <laughs> which are all basically the same thing. They're all the dynamic linker. Uh, they follow a particular lookup path to find uh, shared objects by name. So in this executable, all that's in there is just this name here. It doesn't actually know where this path is, and this path could be different, could be in a different location. Uh, and so at runtime, it tries all of its known paths to find that. And the way those are configured are in, I think it's etcld.so.conf, yeah, which I guess it has an include, conf.d. Yeah, so here's all of the paths. Oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, I guess I have lib fake root installed. Oh wait, what? Where did that come from? Uh, let's do tail n nine 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 to see where that came from. Oh, it came from fake root x eighty six six four. Okay, cool. I guess there's a package that has extended the so lookup. Uh, but yeah, these are the directories that the dynamic linker will look for to try and find those executables. So in this case, it found it in this directory. Uh, although there's a sim link, uh, so these are actually the same directory. But anyway. Okay, so that's how LDD works. Uh, the cool thing that it will also do is if the uh, shared object is missing, it will tell you that. So if we were to run, I don't know, let's mount this executable into our uh, Docker image. Uh, let's see, Ubuntu focal bash. Uh, oops, TI and RM. Means I left a container around. No, uh, we'll clean that up later. Um, so if we do LDD on a.out, we have now mounted this into the container. Now, don't do this on your host machine because bad things will happen. Um, but we're going to delete libuuid inside this Docker container. And if we run LDD again, you'll see that it says not found. So this means the dynamic linker was unable to find this library. And if we were to try and run this, for instance, uh, you'll get this kind of cryptic error message, error while loading shared libraries, libuuid.so.1, cannot open shared object file, no such file or directory. So if you're missing a dynamically linked library, your executable will not work. So that, that often means that you need to make sure this particular dynamic linked library uh, runs on machines that have similar setups to what we have. Now, the cool thing about dynamically linked libraries is they're basically just this shared object name and the function names. As long as you have a system that has something with the same file name and those same function names, your executable will work fine. Uh, so if we look for uh, libuuid on this machine, uh, or grab, grab. 
you'll see that I have 2.34.01 blah blah blah. Uh, but I can actually run a different version of Linux onto, let's do Jammy, which has not come out yet, uh, but there's a pre-release version of it. Um, oh, and we need to mount it in there, pud uh, a.out to a.out in read-only mode. And if we look for UUID on here, you'll see we're at 2.37.2, .2, which doesn't match our original version. But, uh, <laughs> and people have taken a lot of special care to make sure that this works out, uh, both of these libuuid binaries have the same application binary interface, or ABI, which means that they have the same function call signatures in the same version, uh, such that you can use older binar older compiled binaries against newer libuuids. If we run LDD here on a.out, you'll see that it still links against this same file name, but it's a different version. Uh, and if we run it, it still works. So we're, we're able to compile code on old, old hardware or old, old user space and run it on newer user space. All right, so that's kind of LDD, how things get found. Uh, I wanna show you the actual symbols part and how that part works out. Uh, so the, the, the way you can look at symbols in an executable is by using the NM tool. There's actually like four or five tools that do this as well. So there's like read, L, read ELF, there's um, the other one. I don't know, there's like four of them. I like to use an M personally because this is the oldest one that I've, that I've used for a long time. Uh, but you can, of course, use whatever you want. Uh, if we run NM on a.out, it's going to print out a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, the important stuff that we want to look at here is these undefined ones, these use. Uh, and this is essentially saying that you will find these functions in a different place. Do undefined only. Yeah. So you can see here that some of these come from libc, that's what glibc is, uh, and some of them come from uuid, and they have a version on them. So you can see these are versioned at uuid version 1, and this version is supposed to mean their application binary interface, and that's actually where we get um, you know, uuid 1, for instance. This, uh, where is it, dot so dot 1. So that's kind of where this comes from. It's not exactly, like there is actually a different versioning thing that I don't really completely understand, but you can you can kind of think of that that way. So these are marked as undefined symbols, and it says it's gonna bring it from the shared object which provides UUID 1.0. And so if we run NM on this libuuid here, uh, it actually says no symbols because it is a dynamic library. So we gotta do dash dash dynamic, uh, and you'll see we get a whole bunch of symbols in here. We also see a bunch of U symbols in here as well. Uh, and you might recognize some of these functions like close, connect, fclose. These all come from libc. Uh, so this is actually itself linked against things. If we do ldd this, you can see that it's this dynamically linked library is dynamically linked against libc. So it pulls in a bunch of stuff from, from there as well. Uh, but you'll see we also have uh, these symbols here. These are kind of the version symbols. This says it provides version 2.31, which I believe matches, hmm. It doesn't match this. I guess perhaps these versions didn't change any symbols? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it says that it provides these particular uh, ABI symbols, and the important one that we wanted was UUID 1.0. You'll also see that all of these functions, which are publicly exposed in the, um, in the header file, are also shown here as well. So you can see this was the UUID unparse function we called. Uh, we also saw the UUID generate uh, random function. I don't know what this double underscored one is. Was that in the header? Uh, I don't remember seeing it. Maybe this is just left over from uh, some accidentally exposed symbols. I don't actually know. Uh, these symbols don't necessarily have to match what the header says because they, you know, they can be compiled in a different way. Uh, but they have, you know, they have to be, they have to have at least what the header has. Um, is there anything else that I want to show? Oh, one other thing. Uh, I talked earlier about how um, about how <laughs> Python uses this to generate uh, C modules. So I wanted to actually uh, show you a C module that I wrote and how you can kind of inspect that and see how that fits together as well. And if we do, um, what is one I can do? Uh, um. Oh, 
Well, let's uh, let's actually just install one. And this is actually going to show a different technique that I wanted to show in a different video, but I'll just kind of quickly introduce it here and we'll talk about it later. So if we pip install uh, Oniguru Ma CFFI, this is a Renex library that I wrote, and it installs some shared objects into here. So you can see there's this CFFI backend, and there's this thing. This is the one that actually comes from my library. So we run LDD on that. You'll see that this links in a bunch of stuff as well. Again, we still see this Linux VDSO, we still see libc, and we still see LD. Those are kind of un, uh, like not that useful, uh, but we also see these two libraries as well. First one being libpthread. This again also is kind of a standard uh, C library. It's split out from libc for reasons I don't remember, probably because threading is not available on all platforms. Uh, and then it's linked against libonig. This is the library that actually provides the regular expression parts, and this is just the Python bindings to it. Uh, and you'll see that it actually links to a file that has a full path, and it's inside my virtual environment, which is a little bit strange. And this is due to rpath, which we'll talk about rpath later. Uh, but rpath is a way to do relative path lookups of shared objects. And if we look at the symbols provided here, um, and um, uh, defined, yeah. So this is the important symbol to look at here, particularly for Python. Uh, this pi init double underscore, or pi init underscore and then the module name. Python uses this particular function name to bootstrap and import a module when you run the, when you run import in code. So it looks for something that starts with pi init uh, and matches whatever your module name is. And then you can see there's also these other functions here. These are just the functions that uh, are provided by this library. I believe these are the uh, the functions. Oh, actually, yeah. I made some special C functions that made it easier to work with this, uh, work with the underlying thing. So I did that. Um, and you'll see there's also all these other CFFI things. I don't really understand CFI that much, but I think this is the magic that allows it to stitch together the other shared object at runtime. Uh, but yeah, Python basically looks for this and does some dynamic loading to pull that in uh, using libdl, which is the dynamic loader library, which is also dynamically linked and loaded. Anyway, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, but yeah, last, uh, last thing I want to do is draw a little diagram that kind of brings this all together and kind of shows you how this works. Um, so we start with our executable here, let's say that this is a.out. It has a list of libraries. So let's say it has uuid libuid.so.1. And it has a list of symbols. Uh, symbols, and let's say it needed uuid generate and generage and uuid unparse. Um, so those are the symbols that it needed. And a magical little thing called the dynamic linker which gets invoked when the executable starts, uh, looks at this information here, and first goes and finds the, um, the right shared object for that, and that would be at, you know, at user lib whatever. Um, say, let's say lib uuid.so.1. It's actually not that due to multi-arch. That's why the path has like x86, 64 GNU or whatever, but you could imagine it lives at this path. It finds this shared object, and then it finds these function names um, from this from this here. So these sort of get mapped into this shared object here, and then it starts the executable that has this code available. And so that's kind of kind of how the dynamic linker works. At least that's how I think about it in my head. Oh, anyway, this was a lot. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.